Joe's Inner Child Podcast. So, Rye, I wanted to start by asking you about, um, are you a writer? I know you're an actor, but because you play a writer in this film, I was curious if you're a writer in your free time and how much of that you are familiar, like how much of your own uh, struggle that you kind of brought to that character? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've been, uh, I've, I've written ever since I was uh, a, like a kid. Um, just uh, with creative writing stuff like that and then that's always kind of been a part of me too so yeah and as I've grown I uh, you know I, I I've always con- continuously written and that branched into uh, writing some scripts and screenplays and um, you know some that have been uh, made and others there's piles of others that haven't but, but um, that's usually the way it goes uh, so yeah, it was, uh, I could relate with, with that a lot with, with this character, um, for the first third of the film there, it's kind of his struggle of trying to create this, this story and come up with these ideas and the, uh, the writer's block and the situation that he's in just trying to get over that. And I definitely, I could 100% relate with that because at the time I was actually starting, I had just started working on a new script, uh, and I was about. Uh, about 20 25 pages into it and i it was the first time it was right when lockdown had, had kicked off and it was the first time i experienced like real writer's block um so at that time i was experiencing what he was kind of going through too so it was a yeah it was a pretty meta experience with that um but it was great too because that the filming of that movie and um the get it got the creative juices flowing so i could kind of jump back into things and when i got when I wrapped on that, I jumped right back into my script. So it kind of helped out with that. That's awesome. Yeah. I was going to say like a certain things um, that I noticed, like how it's like, Oh, page 27 or 27, like just little details. I just remember like, Oh yeah. These are the things that like jump out to you when you have writer's block, the things that like you keep noticing. And I wasn't sure how much of that was from a directorial standpoint or something that you kind of added into um the scene i wanted to know a little bit because you are in a lot at least half of the scenes in this film you are the only person in the scene i imagine that was a lot easier to film in during covid too but i wanted to know if you have ever done something so much solo before where it's like just you and you're kind of acting in a room on your own without another person um, I don't, I, I mean, I've done like sex, sections and sequences of stuff, uh, but not quite, not to this extent where it was, yeah, literally just me on screen in a room and having, having to um, kind of get some, you have to get your, uh, obviously the plot points and the emotion and, and everything across. And then one of the biggest, one of the toughest things with that, with, and, and this was me and Greg too, like, and it's the same with, with all the writing elements too. Like Greg, Greg is a writer. He write, wrote the script. He writes all his scripts. And so coming into that, the two of us together, kind of uh, like he had stuff in the script and then had ideas that he'd throw to me uh, before scenes and stuff too. But then myself also uh, having those experiences, but yeah, completely doing things it was solo um as the only actor at least um the the toughest thing was just keeping it fresh and not repetitive too with the little uh like little um mannerisms and and just little kind of hints at what happens later on in the film and stuff like there's a lot of it's in the script i mean me and greg and and gary and michael and everyone who's who's there for those scenes we really struggled to kind of to really think ahead of time to kind of keep those scenes fresh and to do something different each time other if it was in the lighting or my what level my character was at or um, what, what level of his little tweaks, the, the little mannerisms and twitches that uh, the character has, what level they were at and stuff like that. We really, really tried to kind of change each scene and sort of amp it up slowly um, to where it, it gets. But it, yeah, it's definitely a challenge <laughs> when you're, when you're in, and uh, the pressure's on too, when you're the only one in the scenes too, for, for that amount of time too, because there's really no one else to blame (laughs) and not that you're looking for somebody to blame, but now it's all, it's all up to you. Does that give you more room for improvisation? Uh, Yeah. 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 To a degree it does. Sorry. Sorry. 
I was going to say, the, the reason I ask is that I remember watching the scene in the hallway where you were going to knock on the door, but you kept turning around and then going back. And I remember wondering, like, I wonder how much of this was improvised or because I'm sure it was written like, you know, the character uh, Jason is, you know, unsure and going back and forth. I wonder how much of that is improvised. And that got me thinking because so many of the scenes are, you know, on your own. How much of the little details are in you were you able to improvise and do you feel like there's more room to do so than when you're in a, a room acting against another cast yeah yeah there definitely there's there's definitely a lot of uh improv moments and like it was pro probably pretty equal to as to either something that i just might have done in the in the moment or it was an extra take and we just kind of uh, let it flow and do, did some different things with it. Or it was an idea that Greg said, try doing this this time and we'll do it a little bit different. Um, so yeah, there, there is a lot of, a lot of that. I mean, obviously because yeah, with, there's with only me there, it doesn't affect another actor or any other setups really. It's just if, if camera knows what I'm doing and, or if there's only this room to play in, then I can, kind of come up with whatever I want really as long as it works within the the parameters of the script and the character it, it uh it was it was definitely like a, a situation where improv was was a lot more um I guess easy easier to to do and to just pull off but then on the other hand when you're with when you're with an actor um sometimes the improv comes naturally too because you can improv off like if it's another actor that you play well with with uh with the improvisational just ideas you can bounce off each other and sometimes that can give way to new ideas and different things that you wouldn't have thought of yourself so it's a, it's a different version of it but it's um a less complicated version i think for for improv if that makes sense <laughs> oh definitely and the girl um is it lisa is her, her name's lisa right the the neighbor that uh, jason interacts with in the film yeah joanna saw plays lisa Okay. Had you guys ever worked to, uh, together before or was this the first time that you guys were carving out the type of chemistry that you would have together on, on screen? No. Yeah. This was the, this was the first time we worked together. That was, um, we actually met the first day. So because it was, uh, we started shooting um, it was April or May last year, right, right at the beginning of, of the full lockdown and everything. We were super safe and everyone was, uh, we quarantined ahead of time and, and we kind of bubbled our small group, uh, which was only, I think there was only ever five to six of us ever on set. Um, so on the first day I took a train to London, Joanna, I think I'd gotten there the same day and we had a quick little uh, pre-production meeting. That was my first time meeting her. Um, and we, <laughs> so we met with masks on too. Um, and then, yeah, we kind of, we kind of worked on the scenes and stuff as to, I mean, you knowing the film, it's, uh, it's hard to say certain things without spoiling, Sure, but it, it's, uh, it's definitely a relationship that kind of, um, it definitely has to build throughout the, like the, the chronological order of, of her showing up and us meeting each other and then the build of that relationship. So it was, it was actually, I think it actually kind of worked how that we didn't know each other and that kind of in working with each other, it kind of became more of a, like a natural ele element that just kind of was, it was a real thing. So Jason, obviously there's a lot that he's unaware of and, and trying to suppress um, because of that, he's not fully aware of everything that's going around him, or at least he doesn't want to be. So I was curious if you were given the full script and if you were aware of everything and you were just kind of acting or, is it something where the director only gave you certain details so that it was easier for you to get in that character's headspace and the way that they were feeling about it? Um, no. So Greg, yeah, I, I knew the whole story right off the bat. He, he sent me the script. Um, he didn't actually, expl he explained a little bit about what the idea was. And then he sent me the first, um, well, it probably would have been like a couple of drafts in, but he sent me the first, first version that I read. I read the whole thing front to back. So going into it, I definitely knew the whole uh, uh, story front to back. And we, we also, there was another reason we had to do that too, because we actually shot the ending first. So um, with, without spoiling, we, from a certain point on, we shot that whole sequence until the ending. And then we skipped back and started from the beginning again, or we started from 
sorry, the point where Joanna's character comes into it. And then, so, so we kind of shot it in like three different backwards situations. And then when Joanna wrapped, we shot all of my solo stuff at the end. So we kind of worked backwards, but in doing that, it kind of helped us to kind of create those, uh, the, 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 uh, the buildup backwards. We could construct it in a way that like we knew where we were going and exactly how it was going to look and what level the, the emotional levels and all that, where it got to. So we could kind of slowly build up to that. And, uh, we, there were a little, there were lots of other little, uh, tricks and hints that we got to throw into, uh, doing it that way too, where is if you do it fully straight, if we were to do it from the beginning straight through, there's definitely a few things we wouldn't have been able to do. And there's probably a few hints and just um, maybe character traits that might not have shone through as much as they actually did because fully knowing where we were going with it. Um, so yeah, I did, I did know the whole thing uh, going into it and, and it, uh, I feel it would have been a completely different experience. <laughs> like I would, I don't think I would have known how to, um, to play it properly. Right if, if, uh, I didn't know that it, it, uh, it definitely would have been a different, a wholly different performance, I think. Yeah. And I feel like, um, it definitely gives you without any spoilers, um, you know, filming in that order, I feel like it gives the comfortability, comfortability between the two characters a little bit more so that when you're watching it in, in, you know, when you're actually watching the film, you can feel the comfortability once you know and then when jason starts talking about like when you feel like you already know somebody it it actually feels that way rather than just feeling that way to, towards him i feel like that comes across on screen a little bit easier probably because you guys had already shot some of the later scenes again no spoilers <clears throat> um, <laughs> yeah but yeah I, for sure i think it uh, it was a, it was a, i think it was a safe not necessarily safe but it was just the, it was the only way we could really do it the way we did um i mean because there were some physical changes and this that whatever too that uh it, it, we would have had to take probably we would have had to stop shooting and then pick up shooting i don't know a month or two later to, to kind of pull it off but the whole the whole reason we did that too was because we were we were at the situation of, of lockdown we didn't know how if the if the situation and the details with that were going to change any time soon like we just didn't know what was happening it was, it was a big uh, kind of what if timeline of uh when we shot this and not knowing what was going to happen and all that kind of stuff so i know you've had you have filmed a lot of things you've been and a lot of roles i was curious when you were playing jason uh in this film if you felt like it echoed any of your past roles or if there were any uh pieces of any of the characters that you've portrayed before that you kind of pulled into Jason to form this, this being that you were playing? Uh, yeah, there's, you know, particularly there was one, uh, well, there's two, there's, I played two writers. I mean, at least two that I'm thinking of that, that I kind of <laughs> thought of. Um, I, I played two specific writers, um, uh, characters, and one, in both situations, they'd both been been through some tragic uh, pasts and things that had kind of transformed the character. So there was definitely two similarity similarities right off the bat that I that I saw with these two characters. But then specifically, some of the other elements um, actually reminded me a lot. It was one of, was one of my first um, feature roles in a in a film called Never Lost. I played uh, a character named Josh, who was also he was a screenwriter. And he had gone through this um, situation and he basically, it's a bit of a fantasy um, thriller type movie where he's, he's kind of jumping between two realities where in one situation, a tragedy happened and in another situation, it didn't happen. Um, and these are two totally different films, but that aspect of that character really kind of, kind of came back up for, for me thinking, just thinking of it, it was uh I mean, two very different characters in different situations and, and uh, plot lines, but it, there's, if you were to watch the two back to back, you can definitely see some parallels with the characters. I like that. And it makes me, you know, not without, not to get too heavy, but is there any trauma, like suppression that you've dealt with in your own life that you were able to pull from uh, when playing these characters? Um, yeah, I've uh, probably up until a point in my career, I, I mean, I, 
every, I think everyone has some kind of traumas uh, they experience in, in certain points. And there, then there's the things that happen that kind of change your life and kind of uh, change the way you look at everything and, and deal with everything. And I've had something like that happen to me in the past few years. I lost uh, my brother to cancer um, four years ago now. So that was definitely something and it is something I continuously uh, am still dealing with and, and everything, but it is, it's something that comes up in, in a new way that I never expected in, in my roles and in, in acting and stuff. And uh, me and my brother had a huge bond over film. It's kind of how I grew to love movies and film and acting and everything about it. Um, we just had this, this bond over it. So it's kind of, it's kind of a cathartic thing in that it, it feels like he's with me uh and a part of it too, because he always loved movies and making, uh, making, being any part of it kind of basically too. So, and he was a writer as well too. So it's, that's something that definitely comes up in, uh, in the newer uh, roles that I've played and stuff since that has happened. And it comes up in different ways. It comes up, you just, you, know, you never know how it's going to affect you, but in uh, there's some situations in this film where it definitely, it definitely popped up. And, and the, another recent one, I just shot um, Still the Water, which it just came out recently, just in the past two weeks, really. And there's a lot of um, brotherhood moments in that and, and aspects of that that it definitely came into as well. So, you know, first of all, obviously, my condolences for your brother. Um, oh, thanks, man. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's brilliant the way that you put it, you know, with him being with you, especially when you're when you are evoking his spirit, when you're, you know, playing a writer and you're you're experiencing you know going through and actually thinking about the trauma so i was curious if you know doing this film and the other uh film that you were talking about has that helped you deal with um the loss of your brother at all like i know you said it's kind of a cathartic experience do you feel like that has helped you emotionally yeah i think it, i think it honestly has um there's there's only so much talking and um you know, other, other exercises you do to try and get through grief and, you know, grief is something that sticks with you in different ways. But I, I've found that um, making these films and it, it is an, it's an emotional outlet. It's a creative outlet. It's something that sometimes the bottled up things inside you, you can just let out naturally and um, in, in a sort of controlled environment, which, which is a strange thing to be able to do as a, uh, as a job. <laughs> I mean, and I don't just consider acting as a job. It's something I love to do. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of just everything. I'm kind of addicted to it. So it's, it's a great, um, yeah, cathartic and it, and it, it has definitely helped me in some, it's a strange form of therapy, I guess, just being able to, um, to fully let out some emotions and feelings and to, to also know that that's like, something that uh my brother would have loved to have been remembered in and been, been a part of and stuff too so yeah it's definitely it's definitely helped me that's that's great man i appreciate you sharing that um as far as the movie goes or any of your upcoming projects is there anything that you'd like to mention um that i didn't touch on or anything that people don't usually ask you that you'd like to share whether it be about this project and your future projects or even just your social media? Um, I don't think, yeah, other than um, uh, check out Still the Water. If you, uh, if you can, it's on, uh, it's on Amazon in the States and Tubi. And then it's in Canada. It should be all over the place it's on iTunes and uh, Bell, TELUS, Rogers on Demand. Uh, and then, yeah, of course, open your eyes. Uh, will be available June 1st um, in the US and Canada, at least. And I think it, it's going to be streaming and on Blu-ray and DVD, I think, everywhere there. And other than that, uh, keep your ears open for another film coming out. It'll be a little while still, but uh, called Chamber of Terror. It's a pretty crazy horror comedy from uh, director Michael Pereira. So those are the things. Oh, and uh, yeah, I guess I, I just started a podcast too. So uh, if you want to check out a podcast, we, we sample craft beers and we talk about movies and we kind of have these like movie battles on it. It's called Brews, Bros, and Videos. Literary Joe's Inner Child Podcast.